you would think that that medical school and and medical school for African American males would be uh, the same story as as for for, for other uh, fields and 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 people. Obviously, it's not. Tell me tell me why that's true. Well, you know, I think Stephen, there's a number of factors. Um, you know, I've been in healthcare since 1989, and um, I've, I've been around Texas, California, and, and now Michigan, and it's not surprising to me to see, to see the data. And I think you have to think about a number of things going on in our society that contribute to it. I mean, I think first and foremost that um, African Americans, particularly in large urban settings, still have gaps in terms of educational access. Sure. Um, when you think about career um, access and career, uh, career opportunities, oftentimes you think about um, people doing things um, when they see others like them doing it, mm -hmm. um, and you don't see a, a greater preponderance of African American male, particularly uh, physicians. Ron Scott was definitely a pioneer in our community. He actually uh, attended the University of Michigan prior to affirmative action being put in place, yeah. being a student activist and one of the few African Americans on that campus back in the 60s, and then he's, uh, you know, as you mentioned, was a co-founder of the Black Panther Party. And one very important thing that Ron uh, worked on that I uh, came to learn about him over the years is that when police brutality was at a epic rate in the city of Detroit, especially uh, prior to uh, Mayor Coleman Young being the mayor, right. uh, Ron was very instrumental in getting the police commission instituted into the city.